Hey, welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. I'm not going to show you my blood sugars. I'm doing two of these today, so the blood sugars are pretty damn close. So, we'll just move on. Something I do want to mention is yesterday I did a video about when we can't speak. And in there I talked that you should have someone to be able to speak for you. Something I did not clarify the great is that you should have someone registered with the hospital you go to, your drugstore, your doctor. Anywhere you might be going if you're sort of in a low situation and not being able to speak. There. Done. Today's video, we're going to discuss the T1D diet and how it affects diabetes and does it really... We'll be right back. This channel is provided for informational purposes only. Contact your physician for any diagnostic or treatment plan. Back in 1977, October, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I had heard of the disease, but didn't know anything of it. And when I was told, oh, you have to go on the diabetic diet. And it was touted that if everyone ate this way, life would be great. And I believe back then it was sort of based around the food pyramid, which has been shown not the greatest idea, but the diabetes diet was very restrictive. You had exchanges. And I don't really know why they were called exchanges. But you chose, you had four protein choices. And you looked up and you, it showed you what one. So if you had one ounce of chicken, I'm just using this as an example, would be this much weight. You had to 
times that by four. And yes, you had to have your little scales out and your little measuring cups. And it was all meant to be really down to precise science. <sighs> I don't really want to ever go back to those days. Again, this little device. And even if you're on shots, even with that, you're still counting carbs now. And they're finding carbs is what drives your sugars. Now you could go and say, well, no, I'm on a non-carb diet. Well, that's not going to work. You had to eat at a certain time. And if you didn't eat, if you missed your afternoon snack, you were going to be low. And some diabetics, and in the earliest stages, I got to admit I was a little guilty of this, was that, oh, I'm feeling low. There was no real way to check. It would take too long to do urine test because you had to do a urine test and then you, sorry, then you, you had to do a first void. Then you had to wait and do a second void. By that time, you could be sprawled out. So, oh, you're low? Oh, well. Or what are you feeling? And I'm thinking, you know what? If someone asked me that today, I don't know I'd have an answer for them. I don't feel those. You need to nowadays have a sensible diet. And when I'm talking sensible diet, I'm talking ideally you should have some of the five, I think it's five food groups. Dairy, unless you're lactose intolerant. Vegetables. Oh yes, let me just go back. Vegetables, there was an A vegetable and a B vegetable. And if you had a B vegetable and you had an A vegetable, oh my God. Today we're so much more relaxed. I've said this many times on this channel. A diabetic can have anything he or she wants to eat. They can have cakes, cookies, um, beer, pop with sugar in it. Some general rules. One, you have to count the carbs. This is not gonna be that easy. You're not able to get off scot-free. Next, you need to give the insulin to cover those carbs. Three, you don't do it all the time. You don't say, okay, every day at lunch, I have a great big, huge piece of cake. When you're choosing your carbs, you want to choose complex carbs so your body can break them down at a slow rate. If you have quick acting carbs like pop or orange juice or 
anything that can be digested quickly, your blood sugar could go skyrocketing. Yeah, I know an awful lot of diabetics for years felt that it was better to ask for forgiveness. I don't mean like, oh, it's a disaster for forgiveness. What I mean to say is it's easier to combat the high blood sugars after than before. But if you're counting carbs, you know, and you can stop it from getting that high. And you feel better. Sorry, I saw this. I trying to bug me there. There we go. Allowing your body to stop having the roller coaster effect is ideal. Nine times out of ten, there's probably a reason <clears throat> why your blood sugar is going up and going down. Trust me, we tried all sorts of things with me. <laughs> the best one, and I do not suggest this for anyone out there. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a nurse. So, take this verbatim. Not verbatim, but just take it and just understand as an example of treatment plans I did. While I was in the hospital, they were worried of going up, going down, and that I should have enough carbs so that I could go through the night. So every breakfast, I would have one egg. That was it. I may have had two eggs, sorry, probably two eggs sounds better. That was it. Lunch, I could have more. A stack, I was more open to different forms of carbs. Dinner was big. And the last snack of the day was huge. While I was in a specialized unit at Royal Columbian, my doctor said, well, why don't you order a pizza for snack? Okay, so I ordered a pizza. And... It was good. I can't really remember. I don't think this plan really worked. But food does play a role. You don't want to have high sugar foods all the time. You don't want to have high salt foods. Diabetes, whether it's type 1, type 2, gestational, can cause heart issues. So, keeping the salt level down for anyone, not only diabetics. You can look at different varieties. There's things like Mrs. Dash. Um, pepper. Oh, I went on a kick about pepper. <laughs> It allows some form of spicing up a rather bland diet. I went through and for a while you couldn't have sauces, you couldn't do this. We talked about sugar, salt, excess fats. And you gotta watch out with sauces because a lot of them do have excess fats. 
a well-rounded diet will help your blood sugar stay intact. And when your blood sugars are intact, you're going to feel better. You're going to be able to live your day. Mm. But you don't need to be sitting there having salads every single day. And if you go out to dinner and you want that special dessert or it's your birthday and you want to have a piece of birthday cake, have a piece of birthday cake. But don't let it get going. More than that, the good old 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, you follow a balanced diet, you're counting carbs correctly, awesome. 20% of the time, you can kind of go off the grid. But doesn't mean, okay, I've done 80% of today, 20% now. No, no, no. Try to do as much balanced diet as you can. You can, if you enjoy salads, have salads. If, but make sure you have some cheese, some chicken, some form of protein. And with that, have a great day. And remember, you are what you eat. Bye. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you. My email is Mike's Diabetes World at gmail.com. Mike's Diabetes World at gmail.com. Mm -hmm.